I have an interview buddy. Interview buddy! Alright, reaction. Ah! <laughs> 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 Alright, so here's the skew, everybody. We've been absent for a little while, but Kimberly has inspired me to continue with another episode. However, because of the lack of turnout, it will be more of an interview than an actual episode, but it will still be glorious. Because I have a mustache and she has a Pomeranian. You can't get Pretty any much. better than that. <laughs> so, hello, Kimberly. How are you today? I am good. Are you graduating yet? Yes, I am. Wonderful. Where did you graduate from? I graduated from Packing House Christian Academy. Christian Academy, guys. That's why she's smarter than everyone else. <laughs> when did you graduate, Kimberly? 2016. 2016. This year, guys, she's a newbie to the world. Newbie. I'm a noob. <laughs> so, uh, one of the topics that we have on our little Facebook page is, um, what are you doing after high school? What is it like being graduated from high school? Is it different? Is it the same? What is it like? I would say it's almost like a big extended summer, honestly, because I haven't really been doing anything, and I mean, the plan is to start in spring, so... Where are you going to be starting at? I'm probably going to be over at Valley Ooh. to do, like, my general ed there, and yeah. And then you're going to go to Harvard and be a lawyer. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have to see where I'm going to transfer from there, because it'll probably be based on, like... What college is the best for my major? And What's all your that. major? I do want to get into psychology because I want to be either a marriage counselor or relationships therapist. So, yeah. so uh, practicing some counseling. Um, what should I do when my wife tells me to take out the trash? Should I, should I do that or should I rebel because of my natural tendency to be a man and not do things? What, what would you say to that situation in marriage? Well, a real man will be kind to his wife and help her in any way she can, especially yeah. since you guys have a newborn now. Oh, so. yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's kind of an extra part in the equation. Well, I so. guess that does uh, increase the likelihood that I would do that then. Yes. But what about when I tell her to take out the trash? Well, teamwork. Both of you guys work together. So. I like it. She's already got my, uh, my business. I will be going to see her next week on Tuesday. <laughs> Dang it, I gotta get an office by then. Just yep, kidding. <laughs> yep, hurry, you better hurry. If I don't have an office, I'm not paying for anything. It's gonna be free counseling. <laughs> well, anyway, so she's gonna be a counselor, going to get her general ed done at Valley. Don't worry, I'll give you family discount. And what what inspired uh, the family discount? I mean, what inspired that <laughs> major? Um, just kind of, I don't know, like, probably back in my junior year, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I was just kind of like, Still debating what I want to do for my major, but then just kind of going through just random s scenarios, I guess you could say, where like I would help out people and stuff, and you know, they come back to me later saying, your advice was really good. And so after that, it was kind of like, it was just something that was kind of like a natural thing for me, and they always say, you know, do something that comes natural yep. to you and is something that you love, so I'm like... Yep, every yeah. time, that's what you got to do. And if you don't do that, then it won't work. Exactly. I agree. I don't know if I have a video about that, but now I should. <laughs> All right, so you're out of high school, you're planning going to the Valley. Are you nervous about that? I definitely am nervous for, like, what's going to come from that because, you know, it's going to be a new experience for me. But I think I'll probably get used to it. I mean, obviously, I've been talking with my friends as they've been uh, transitioning from just their summer to going to their community colleges for the beginning or uh -huh. some of them going to universities. And they've had a pretty easy time. They said that it's kind of scary at the beginning, but I think it's more the... Uh, going into it that's scary because you don't know what to yeah. expect. But then once you like get into the group of things, then it's like it's kind of like high school, but just maybe I'm living on campus. So yeah. Well, one thing that I recommend is find a club that you're interested in. Because there are people true. in there who are like-minded, and they can help you get through the first few steps. Definitely. That's what I did. I so, like that idea. Because we had our pride club, and that was amazingly connected <laughs> because almost everybody there has some connection to another club, and, and they have different ideas of what you can do. As far as majoring and classes to take mm -hmm. and best teachers and so on. So, yeah. So, uh, what kind of class are you going to be taking this first semester? Um, well, 
like I was saying, I'm probably going to be getting, like I said, my general ed stuff. So just like kind of just the basic classes are just kind of like the ones that you just have to get in order to, yeah, get everything you need for those. But then I probably won't go into the classes that are like specifically for my major, maybe into like my junior year. So, so you think you might get a history class? Probably. That's pretty cool. So I mean, I do like history. What kind of history is your favorite? Definitely extreme history. Huh? Definitely. Like, doing that with Mr. Hickok, I mean, besides the fact I was one of the main people stressing for that class, like, I was one of the first people to, like, sign the petition. I'm like, as soon as yes! I read the petition, I'm like, I am signing that thing. I'll sign it, like, 30 times if yeah. I have to. Be like, I'll sign fake names if we need to get a certain amount of signatures. Love it. And I loved that class. Like, it wasn't, okay, I guess I should say club instead of class, because it did meet after school, but Muzzle I tried to class, always though. go to every meeting yep. I could, yep. and the footage, you know, sometimes it was, it, it could be very hard to watch. There were times where we walked out of there kind of feeling like, oh my gosh, this is depressing, but it, it really was insightful, because it's like, it was things that did happen in history, and you know, we can't just ignore it. They really did happen. So. What would be an example of one of your favorite topics that you study that you weren't really sure Mm -hmm. uh, about as far as like it was intense, it was uh, mysterious, it was uh, mind numbing. Like, well, I would definitely say, well, one of the big ones we discussed was the Holocaust, and I actually did discussions of the Holocaust even in like sixth grade. We actually visited both museums, yep. and we did a huge study on that where we read through Anne Frank's diary and stuff. And I would say I even learned even more than I did because it was, you know, it's at the high school level now, so I learned a lot more stuff that we probably weren't really able to talk about back in sixth grade, because it's like, you know, you guys are too young to hear this, so yeah, it's like... that's true. But then also uh, hearing about, like, the uh, killing fields, that, that was something that was definitely, yeah. like, hard to hear, too, because we literally saw footage of, like, dead bodies, like, just, like, laying in the streets, and it's like, you know... Yes. The, the thing I find interesting about about the fact that you mentioned that is is a lot of people will deny that that even happened. Mm -hmm. What would you say to somebody who says, that never happened, what are you talking about? That's all edited. I would definitely say then that they're not looking at the evidence because there is evidence. I mean, the fact that a lot of these places, I mean, I can't say for sure for the uh, Killing Fields one because I don't know, although I have heard they have like this like cave thing where it's like a bunch of like skulls and stuff of people that died. But for sure, like the Holocaust, like there is... There are museums for it where you can literally go. And I actually had the privilege in sixth grade of actually getting to hear the story of a Holocaust survivor. Yep. And which, I'm uh, like... Which one? Uh, I don't remember her name, but I just remember it was at the Holocaust Museum, not the Museum of Tolerance, because it was yeah. the smaller one. Yeah. And just, it was really cool, like, hearing her story. And it was just, <laughs> it was hard to listen to in the sense of it was very, like, um, sobering. But at the same time, it was very informative, too. Like, it told us a lot of stuff. Yeah. So. yeah, well, I had the experience of hearing a, a now deceased uh, Holocaust survivor as well. I got to hear Eli Wiesel, the writer of Night. Mm. And he was something astounding. So either these guys are extremely good storytellers or it was in fact true. Yeah. It is definitely what it comes down to. Anyway, speaking of history, soon we're going to be looking at another piece of history coming up mm -hmm. with our election this yep. year. We have two of the craziest, I think, president uh, possibilities than we've I ever had. I can't argue with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we, got, we got Trump over here with his big mouth, and we got Hillary over here with all her secrets. Yeah. Um, what do you think history is going to look like in a few months here? I think it's definitely going to be probably, at least for me personally, maybe more because this is the first election where I'm actually getting to vote in it. Mm -hmm. And so in that sense, I have a lot more involvement in like just researching and just hearing about the candidates and stuff to me as far as i'm concerned this has to be like the most interesting <laughs> election i think just because the two candidates are yes just like you said they're very crazy so <laughs> what have uh, what have you heard so far about these candidates well let's see well i have heard about all the secret stuff with hillary clinton uh, i've heard that top secret don't mention it on here we might get censored Oh my gosh, yeah, as if it wasn't already mentioned in emails uh, that got leaked out. <laughs> uh, so, I'm, uh, it's funny too, because that actually reminds me of uh, 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 this joke that I heard where it was like, uh, someone was saying like, oh, Hillary Clinton's going to be the first female president, and but they put like an F instead of the full word, uh -huh. because they were saying because the email... Always already out. And it, was like, it, it was a play on words. I thought it was funny, but I'm like, it, it has some truth behind it. So it's like, that's hilarious. And then Trump. So what? What? Go, I was saying to Hillary for a second. What do oh, you yeah. think about this whole email scandal? 
Did you hear about the fact that she got uh, basically all that washed away by the federal government? I did, and I think that that is, like, messed up because I'm like, if you did something, at least, like, own up to it. I mean... It's like when I took my shoes off before the video made you smell it, I should own up to that in front of everyone. Well, every, well, we already know that Because we know that her email thing was pretty stinky. <laughs> well, the, also the fact that you just mentioned that in front of everyone, so... Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I definitely, that, that was a problem right there with that whole incident. I'm like, if there's even the chance, even if a president to me hasn't been actually, like, accused of doing something where they're literally, like, saying, okay, you're guilty of this... To me, if there's even the chance that a presidential candidate is guilty of something, they shouldn't be allowed to run. Because I'm like, if there's a chance that we have a felon running for president, that's not good. You know what's interesting? If you're not a United States citizen, you can't run for president. But for some reason, if you're, an, if you're a U.S. citizen lying to the general public, you can't. Yeah, that, that's jacked up. That is very jacked up. You know, which brings us to Trump. And his viewpoint on illegal immigrants. What do you think about his idea that all these illegal immigrants should be removed from the country? I think that his approach to that, to me, I can... Here's the hard thing. I can kind of, in a sense, understand kind of where he's coming from. But I personally do not agree with, like, how he's wanting to do that. Because here's my thing that I think about. With immigrants, you also have immigrants, for instance that are trying to flee persecution, like, from various other countries, and they need to be able to get out of their country because, I mean, if not, they're going to die. Uh -huh. And so I'm like, there needs to be a way to give those people safety. Yeah. So I think that's a problem in and of itself right there. Yes, I do agree that we need to take care of our people inside the borders because they're actually in our country, but I definitely also think we need to help people that are trying to flee persecution. So because... you think there's a certain type of immigrant that should be allowed to stay? I, I would definitely say that because I think that a lot of times also you find out that the ones that are the ones that are actually like fleeing and stuff, they're good people. They're not just trying to get a free ride on everything. They're just legitimately trying to go on with their lives and just try to live as normal of a life as they can. And obviously the country that they're in right now, they can't live a normal life because there's just violence everywhere. So do you so. think, do you think uh, because of the fact that Donald Trump is saying this, He's as bad as Hillary, or is there a different level of wrong or right in this case? If I can be honest, I think they're both kind of, they're like at opposite ends of the spectrum, but at the same time, they're both like, I guess if I can use the word, they're both extreme in their different views that to me, I think more maybe the appropriate level of whatever should be more in the middle, like somewhere kind of more in the middle, not so far his direction, not so far her direction, but more something just kind of. Middle yeah, of the road. So they both need moderation and some exactly. level or another because one is too secretive and one is obviously a little too loud. Yeah, because there's been <laughs> stuff where Trump's gotten in trouble for saying things oh, yeah. where he is not, not controlling his, his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it's like you you need to think before you speak. And if you say something that is bad, you need to own up to it. So So would you say they're anti American or would you say they just are undereducated on some level as far as right or wrong? Um, I could see how you could argue either side. I would almost think more maybe um, more like undereducated, kind of, because if I can be honest, sometimes the way that it seems like with the scenarios that are going on, it seems almost kind of like immature behavior, kind of. Like, I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. like like uh, Hillary Clinton, for instance, take the example of like her trying to like, you know, keep all those emails and stuff a secret. It's like, that comes across like a kid that, like you know, stole, no, a, cookie, you see that. stole a cookie out of the cookie got jar, and they got crumbs all over their yeah. face, and and their mom's like, "Did you take the cookie out of the cookie jar?" No. And they're like, "No." <laughs> and then with Trump, he comes across like the kid that doesn't know how to keep their mouth shut. He did it. Yeah, or is like calling all the other kids on the playground like butt face or something. So. <laughs> that sounds about right. Except on his yeah. playground, all the people are Muslims. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Lord. All right, so we've established they're both nuts. Uh, yes. But going back to the question of un-American, there's a lot of things that people would say about them is un-American. And I can um, see those viewpoints. Too, what, would you, what would you say defines someone as a good American, both relating to illegal immigrants and relating to a good presidential candidate? Well, I would definitely say, I mean, I would say big things like, you know, supporting our troops and uh, just being... 
I guess if I could say kind of like as much as they can try to be the essence of like how our forefathers were, you know, how they ran the country and they did a good job. And even now, you know, years later, we still look up to them. We read about them in our history books and how, you know, they were great men and women. And just, you know, if we had more people that were like that, that just were really good um, people in our country that just, you know, maybe they brought new ideas that were good ones and just they actually were trying to make our country better. Yeah. You know, not doubling our debt like a certain <laughs> person I won't say right now, but <clears throat> just actually trying to improve things yeah. and not just make it something where you're just saying you'll improve things just to get a bunch of votes, but actually, you know, go through with your action, you know? Cheers. So, all right. That, yeah, that makes sense. My dad told me this, and this is what I believe a good American is. A good American is any man or woman who stands for the goal his country has set before it, which is the American dream, mm -hmm. which also goes under... Uh, any good American is any man or woman who stands for the best his family can be, the best his country can be, and the best his faith can inspire. Yeah. Would you agree with that? I, as, yes, as I would definitely American. agree with So whether you're illegal or, or legal in this country, the best way to be American is to support your faith, your family, and the country uh, as a whole uh, in regards to the American dream. Exactly. So perhaps because this country is falling apart, we wouldn't be considered anti-American by fighting against it, but rather fighting for the dream that we had set before ourselves. Exactly. With the founding fathers. Yeah. Okay. So, speaking of American and un-American activities, I would like to show you a video and get your opinion on it. Alrighty. Okay, this is relating to something that's been all over the news in recent history. I'm wondering if this is what I think it is. <laughs> All eyes are on embattled quarterback Colin Kaepernick, who vows to sit out the national anthem again at Thursday night's game. When there's significant change, and I feel like that flag represents what it's supposed to represent, and this country is representing people the way that it's supposed to, I'll stand. The game is billed as military night on the San Diego Chargers website. It's a tribute to the hundreds of thousands of military personnel who live in the city, well known for its patriotism. Oh, see, can you see? Here's more irony. Performing the national anthem will be U.S. Navy Petty Officer Stephen Powell. The firestorm over Kaepernick's refusal to stand has led to a major debate. Even Hillary Clinton's running mate, Senator Tim Kaine, is weighing in. you got to respect people's ability to act according to their conscience. I mean, I, I do it differently. I think if you really thought about issues uh, and about this country, you'd do it differently. Now, Kaepernick is being blasted by CBS sports announcer Boomer Esiason. Disgraceful, despicable, and I can't even say it in strong enough terms. To use an NFL field for a political statement is absolutely ridiculous. But the quarterback is getting support on social media with the just-created hashtag Veterans for Kaepernick. This vet posted her photo with the caption, I served five years and I support you, Kaepernick. Sitting or standing, exercise your rights. Basketball legend Kareem Abdul-Jabbar threw his support to Kaepernick on CNN. Maybe people don't like his style or, or his timing. But, uh, you know, he's, he's trying to call attention to issues that, that are important to him. And I think he has the right to do that. And here's one more thing sure to generate controversy. Look at the socks Kaepernick has worn since August 10th. It's a cartoon image of a pig in a police officer's cap. So there you have a video of a guy in front of the entire country, in front of... Uh, hundreds of, um, of people, both soldiers and just citizens alike, refusing to stand because he believes that the United States flag is not re representing what it needs to represent. Do you think that's something he should be allowed to do? I honestly, it's crazy because like I had a million things like going through my head when I was watching that because, in one sense, I do understand what he's saying about the whole thing of like America is not the America that it should be, you know, like okay. that it's not being represented the way it should. But here's the thing, that still doesn't change the fact, the respect that you should have for the American flag and for, uh, you know, even though it might not be exactly the way it's supposed to be right now, still that flag was fought for by millions of men and women who fight in the military and give their lives every day that are still even active now and then all the way throughout history. 
And that flag stands for something more than just America right now. It okay. stands for America throughout the history. Okay, so, but, but that one veteran, she said he should have the right to sit down. So are we arguing that veterans, or would you say that she's a dishonorable American by allowing him to sit down and disrespect the people before her? Because she, she's stating basically, because I have said, you can do what you like. But would you say that she has the ability to speak for all the past veterans who have served, or do you think that's unfair for her to say something like that? I think it's kind of unfair because it's only one person. Because, I I mean, I, I think I would hold a lot more weight to it if they literally interviewed, like, group of veterans and you know I'd like to hear what some of their um answers are to that because maybe she's okay with it but if we talk to you know more veterans out on the streets maybe maybe ones that are like have come home recently or even ones that are still active I'd want to know what they all had to say about so, it because surely not everyone would feel that same way so say uh, there's a football game and they have all the veterans standing with the football players and Kaepernick's got his entire team to sit down and there's 150 veterans and 100 of them are sitting and 50 of them are standing. Well, which ones would be the right ones? Which ones would be the true American heroes? To be honest, I don't know like, you know, what would be going through other people's heads. But to me, I would actually uh, be really more respecting the ones who were standing because yes, America is not the country it should be right now. But that still doesn't mean you should disgrace the American flag. So are you saying that the American flag is more than just the current history of the United States? Yes. I believe it represents U.S. since it was first made, since the first American flag was made. I mean, that flag stood for our freedom. So when you stand for an American flag, what are you standing for? I believe you're standing for our country as a whole, like throughout all the ages. I mean, to me, it goes all the way back from when we... England and we wanted to be separate from them and just to me it goes back all the way back I so, mean it's like a it's almost like a fabricated version of a big history book I like that that's pretty cool that's a nice way to say it so I don't know that, that's a weird way to word it but like so the American <laughs> flag is the history of the country not the present of the country exactly the past not the, not the now it incorporates our present our present as well for sure yeah. obviously but it also it, it's so much more than that so what about the future would you say the american flag stands for the future by him not standing for the american flag he might be saying something negative about the possibility of our country i think also that i actually would kind of agree with that and then also even kind of adding on to that in case some people would be like what what is yeah. she saying i would say that the reason why is because for you to not, like, for instance, like, not stand or whatever because you're like, oh, the country is, like, trash right now, you're, it's almost like you're giving up on the country of saying we can't make it better. But honestly, you know, everyone keeps saying, you know, we're the next generation. So if we're really the next generation, we have that potential to make it better. We have that potential to, you know, change things, you know, change the course of things. We don't have to keep going by, you know, like, for instance, what everyone else says we need to do. We can make our own decisions the next generation. Okay, so you would say that the American flag stands for the past and the battles we've fought, mm -hmm. the present for the battles that we need to support, mm -hmm. and the future for the battles that we hope to win. Exactly. In the, in the sake of freedom, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Exactly. So by not staying for the American flag, would you say it's un-American? I would. I Me know too. some people might have Me different too. opinions than, than us, but I'm like... Now here's, here's a question for you, and I want an honest answer too, because this is my opinion. I had a discussion with one of my friends on Facebook about this, and I got a little heated while you made more objective because I said, if you don't stand for the American flag, the flag that represents the rights that you have and the, and the people who have died for those rights, then you void all the battles that that person uh, laid down their life for, and you void your own right to have a choice yeah. by standing or not standing for the flag. Definitely. Would that be a fair statement, or do you think that's selfish? And... No, not at all, because it's not selfish, because what you're saying is you're talking about all the people that died for it. And that's not selfish because that's honoring all the fallen veterans. And then also, you know, not just the freedoms of us, but the freedoms of every American and how we take it for granted. A lot of times, you know, the freedoms we have in this country, but you look around, we're, we have a lot more freedom than a lot of other countries that are under persecution right now. Right, so. True. so we still are the greatest country in the world. So why should we not stand for the dreams and ideals that we hope to be upheld in the exactly. future, even with our struggles? And if nobody supports those dreams now, who will? If we all say, oh, we're just giving up on our country, our country's going to fall into ruin, then you're giving up and you're not making an effort. 
Now, going going from a Christian perspective now, this is where we lose half the audience, if we have one at all. <laughs> from, from a Christian perspective, would you say that there is a different answer to that question? Would you say that we, with God first in this country, we should not be supporting the American flag? Or if we had a different religious standpoint, do you think that should affect how we uh, stand, say, uh, or salute the American flag based on the traditional view of uh, the Founding Fathers' dream for this country? Well, here's the thing I would say that. First of all, obviously, we know one of our freedoms that we have, obviously, because we are a free country, is the freedom of religion. I mean, you know, so you, you can follow whatever religion you want. But the thing is, is when it comes to Christianity, for instance, I think the way that God fits into that is because of the fact that, you know, we were founded on Christian principles, God was the head of that. He was, I mean, that was the reason that we wanted to come to America in the first place, was freedom to worship God, freedom to get away from uh, the Church of England where it's like, oh, you had to worship this way or whatever, you know? And so I definitely believe that God definitely does work in there because by honoring, you know, our fallen troops we're all and honoring the flag, we're also honoring that foundation of God in our government and that it's been there all along. Now, I don't, I don't know if you're aware of this, but sidetracking just a little bit, there's a group of people who believe that the founding father were atheists. What would you say to them? I would say, first of all, I would say there is tons of proof saying otherwise, and I would just say, like, honestly, like, start digging into the history, and, I mean, if you, after getting as much information you can, if you still think that, then that's what you think, but, honestly, there, there's so much uh, information, evidence out there saying otherwise, I mean, you know, from even just looking at things like our money, where it says, in God we trust, on top of our money, it's like, God was definitely a part in that, you know, and maybe they don't know specifically what part he had in it, but he definitely had a part in it. So when it says in God we trust in the Pledge of Allegiance and people try to remove that, do you think that's fair? I do not think that's fair because that is a huge part of where our country came from. A lot of people say, well, it's infringing on my religion yeah, or whatever, you know. Yeah, if they don't believe it, why should they have the saying God we trust? It's a, if they have an atheist viewpoint or a Buddhist viewpoint, why should they have the saying God we trust if they don't trust in God? In which case, I guess to that, I would say, well, that was the roots. I mean, if our if our country had been founded on a different religion, then we'd probably have elements of that religion but then, in our but pledge then, of But then, if now that we're not now that we're not back with the founding fathers, shall we revise that to fit the new America, where everybody has different perspectives, and we shouldn't have to be offended by that? You see, the problem with that is, if you, as soon as you take God out, then everything's going to start crumbling because it's like. Honestly, you know, for all the people that are in prayer right now for our country, I mean, just think about, like, you know, like, uh, praying around the flag pools and stuff like that. I mean, we are looking for a revival. And I think even people that aren't, like, Christians, even they, even though they don't know exactly what they're looking for, even they know that they're that America needs some kind of revival. Yeah. I mean, a moral, most people, a moral grounding point where we can come yeah. there and take we're, it we're all, I think we're all in agreement that, you know, America is not the country that needs to be. And so I think that even though they may not know exactly what our country needs, those of us who know we need God in the country know that and we definitely need to keep him there because without him, it falls apart. It's true. Very true. So, what I would say as an answer to my own question is the reason we say in God we trust, the reason we stand for the American flag, the reason we do anything in honor of this country is because we recognize that regardless of whether you are a believer in Christ, whether you're a believer in, in, uh, in uh, Buddhism, whether you're a believer in nothing at all, you're standing for the freedom to have a, exactly. in a God or a certain religious system. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. So, that aside, now that we're done with politics, mm -hmm. what are the most interesting TV shows and things that you've seen recently? <laughs> that <laughs> that you is liked. a big change right you there. Liked. I think I think they've dealt enough with patriotism. Now they know our viewpoints; they can make up their own mind. So now, uh, TV. What are what are some recent TV and movies that you've seen that you really enjoyed? Let's see. Well, I'm not sure what I can say as far as movies. I actually feel like I haven't really watched many movies like in a really long time. But I have been 
I have been binge watching some a few shows here and there, and then also I have some favorite comedies of mine that I love watching like all the time. Because something about comedies, it's like if I'm having like a bad day or something, it's just like I don't know, it cheers me up. So I'm like, <laughs> what's your favorite comedy? Okay, um, well I do watch a lot of the comedies that are on like uh, True TV. Okay. So like I've seen shows like Impractical Jokers, <laughs> uh, World's Dumbest. Stuff like that, which that, that looks funny to me. So have you seen an episode uh, with me on it? With World Dumb? <laughs> no, I've not. <laughs> I'm on there because I'm obviously the world's dumbest. If I'm not on there, then I forgot because I'm dumb. <laughs> okay, so you're like Impractical Jokers, World's Dumbest. My wife really enjoys those as well. Ah. Uh, what What are some favorite dramas you've seen? Let's see, favorite dramas. Well, I I definitely want to get back into Glee because I, oh, yes. I love that show. It's my show. favorite show of all time. I love it, and I've actually it's funny too because I've actually got more into the music too because like um it used to be that I only liked a few songs from it, but then I started like a. Uh, doing it on YouTube where like you can get a song to play autoplay like afterwards uh -huh. and so I'd walk in the room like maybe 10 minutes later and I forgot I'd left my iPod on so uh -huh. like it would be on like 10 songs later I'm like I've never heard this song before but like I listen but I'd be like oh I love this song and I love how like they like <laughs> mash up songs like where it's like maybe a mixture of like two or three songs song, song. <laughs> it's good. It is good music. I really like it. I've actually found out like a lot of their songs almost more than the, some of the originals. Oh, yeah. So, like, they do some excellent They uh, do. They the definitely only ones do. I will never ever give them credit for is Michael Jackson. I'm sorry, but you just can't do that, Justin. Well, you hey, can't. Michael Jackson. Michael, Michael is Jackson. Michael, and that's the way it's supposed to be. And I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you got uh, Impact of the Jokers and uh, Glee. What's a favorite, uh, of, uh, a favorite sitcom? Do you watch any sitcoms? Oh. Um, uh, I'm guessing by, well, I would first ask you to find people sit the more... and they watch a TV show and you hear them laughing and enjoying the TV show while you're watching the TV show. Well, if you're being like in, in lines of like maybe like, you mean so shows like, like maybe family. more like about the families and stuff like yeah. that. Well, let's see. Um, I do like the show Reba. Ooh. And, uh... With um, the accent? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also like The Middle. Okay. That's a funny one. Um, and I'm trying to think where are some other ones I've watched. Uh... There's various other ones I've watched, so but those but those two especially come to mind. I really like those two. That's great. Okay, cool, cool. I'm a big kind of all in the family, <laughs> and the Last Man Standing with uh, uh, Tim Allen. Those are two of the best. And Tool Time. Oh, and I did forget to Home mention Proven. like a uh, uh, Everybody Loves Raymond and oh, George Lopez. I do yes. like I do like those two as well. That's an American TV show, so if you don't stand for your flag, you cannot watch them. And everybody hates Chris. I'll say that one too. Well, why does everybody hate Chris? He's a cool guy. We've had him on this channel before. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What about movies? What's what's three good movies you've seen? Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to kind of roll back a little bit because okay. it, it actually has been a while since I've seen some movies. So. Oh well, you have to leave now then. Bye. <laughs> okay. Nope. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> All right. Fine. I guess. Okay, um, let's see. As far as some good movies, uh, I'll first mention the ones that I guess I've seen in theaters that were really good. When we went on our field trip and we went and saw Alice Through the Looking Glass, that was a good movie. Yeah, actually I actually enjoyed that. that. I, I did. Had, I liked that one. I have not enjoyed the first one, so I've not seen the second one. I actually really enjoyed the second one. And then Not I would the also, first or worse? Huh? Better or worse? Than the to first? me, it was different because, I mean, to me, I actually would definitely say this one had a lot more action in it. Okay. Because uh, the first one was like, you know, her discovering. Uh huh. Wonderland, and this one is more like actually her coming back is almost like a warrior to fight for them and stuff. Fight so. for Neverland. Sorry. Plus, I I did get a I did get a trip out of the uh, timekeeper guy. He's <gasps> he's like they whoa, are. he's crazy. He's they always are. Yeah. Lord. You, got, you always gotta have an epic villain. You know? So I'm guessing um, you haven't seen Suicide Squad then. I want to see that one really bad. I have not yet. I have been listening to the soundtrack. <laughs> It's probably Will Smith's most epic action role of all time. It was interesting. I did not know he had that left. And he pulled it off. So go see it. And I then the to. one you absolutely need to see in theaters is the Kubo. Mm. The, the two strings. I've never seen that one. Yeah, I don't okay. even know what it's about. All right. Well, let me, let me pull up the trailer. Best movie I've seen in a long time. <sighs> Can you hear me, Koopa? Your village is burned to the ground. Your enemies aren't far behind. 
We need to go now. You have questions, I can tell. Who? You get three. Why? Only three? I think that was your first question. What? I don't understand what's happening. This is the beginning of your story. Your family is very powerful. Your mother used her magic to save you. your father's armor. It's the only thing that can protect you. Many years ago, I was cursed. This great adventure is my destiny. Your magic is growing stronger. You need to learn control. That was Kubo. That does look really cool. That I, movie was seriously one of the best movies I've seen in the longest time. I would put it up there with Matrix. And I think favorite. I saw a very, very short trailer of it in the movie theaters. Like, shorter than that. It was only maybe a few, like, seconds yeah, this of is, it. This is the third one that was released, in my opinion, one of the best ones. That's cool. So, but that is probably the best movie I've seen recently. Now, I know I showed you uh, Miraculous Ladybug. Yes. Which is right now one of the most popular raging kids TV shows that the most adults are interested in. What did you think about those videos that I showed you? I thought those were really cool too, actually. I can definitely see the appeal in it kind of for like all ages because it's got like different elements in it. Have you had a chance to watch any of it? I have not seen Fail. the stuff you showed me only <laughs> because I, have, I don't have access to Netflix yet, so... Well, I'm going to make you watch the, the movie I made you watch already. Uh, just for the sake of if you make any interesting faces, I can blow them up and make you look super weird. Oh, and, um, ah, trust me, you, you plus, don't need to do that much editing to make me look weird. So. And plus, uh, for the viewing audience, uh, whenever they see this, they need to go watch Miraculous Ladybug because it is the best kids TV show that the most adults are watching right now. Sound like a plan? Yeah. Plus, I just really need the excuse to watch it again. <laughs> It's my favorite TV show. In the daytime, I'm Marinette. Just a normal girl with a normal life. But there's something about me that no one knows yet.
I don't know about you, but I can watch that all day. That is cool. Anyway. <laughs> so everybody go see Miraculous Ladybug. It's on Nickelodeon right now. You can watch the same video you watch on Nickelodeon channel on YouTube. And I'm just doing free advertisement because it is that mm -hmm. awesome. So let's see. We've discussed uh, life outside of high school, presidential candidates, and current history and past history, both combined with uh, patriotism and the national anthem. And recent films and TV shows. Are there any topics that you would be interested in discussing before we end the video? Hmm. And how awesome I am with off awesome. That would take too long. Uh, <laughs> and nothing's coming to mind right now. Okay. Well, then with that, we would like to thank all of you who uh, bothered to watch the video all the way through. We know it was an effort. Because <laughs> it's always an effort to watch my videos. However, thank you anyway. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next time on The Skew. Goodbye. Hey guys, I appreciate you watching this oldie but goodie. It's been an adventure since then, and uh, we've come a long way. Anyway, the co-star in this video, the interviewee, if you will, was Kimberly Jones, and uh, we talked about a lot of different things that have happened in the past, and in hindsight, it's kind of interesting how the opinions went. So, anyway, this was still an official part of In Future Tense, so if you like it, please subscribe, and if you hate it, that's all right. Share your comments below.